folks, Mundane Man here again, and today we are going to be working on this Can-Am Outlander L with the 500 twin V engine on it, and it's got the um, electronic power steering. I did do a review of this uh, unit a while back, and you can catch it on uh, the link I put up here, wherever that ends up, and uh, you can watch that if you want. Um, I have been neglecting this poor thing. You would think with COVID I would have been out on it lots in the last couple of years, but I think I went out once in the last two years and been sorely neglecting the poor thing. It just sits around, so I need to do some uh, long needed maintenance on it, such as changing the oil. I'm going to change out the spark plugs on it because they've never been done and the battery needs replacing. Uh, the battery is seven years old as this is a 2015 so it is due for replacement and just the sitting around uh, it drained itself too so we'll get all that done today and maybe we'll get some riding in this year so uh, let's get at it. Okay I'm underneath the Can-Am here let's get some light under here and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, drain the oil out of it now I did run it for a bit to uh, warm up the oil and the drain plug is the most forward large hole on the shield here and I'm not sure if you can see inside there's real difficult to see but there is a 13 millimeter uh, plug in there that needs to come out and I got my pan under here to catch the oil, which is kind of key. Now make sure you pull out the right plug. You don't want to be in a world of hurt later. Figuring out that, oh geez, I just drained the gear oil. I don't know how these guys film with one hand. I can barely do it with two. Okay. There's the oil draining out. Now you could probably take this bottom shield off if you wanted to, but I think that's a lot of effort. So in the oil change kit I got, it came with another uh, washer to put on that drain plug. You always want to make sure you uh, don't reuse that plug. Uh, or sorry use that washer again uh, they're a bit of a compression washer so they're pretty much a one-time use so here's an annoying discovery right behind all of these covers is the uh, oil filter housing in there so I have to strip back a bunch of the plastic to be able to get at it so that means this cover that cover um, and I think the top part needs to come off. So let's do that so we can get at the stupid oil filter. The good news is I need to do some of this anyways to get at the spark plugs. So take the seat off first, just the handle in the back to uh, release it. Um, let's go over here and pull this one off. Uh, just a lift and pull. Gives you access to your air filter here and what do we got on this side we got a plastic plug there so I use my body panel tool to pull that one out under the wheel well is another plastic body panel plug Get that one out Another plug, and I'm sure, yep, back there, back in the rear well, rear wheel well, there's another plug. These plastic things can be frustrating as hell. Sometimes they'll just fall out, other times you're fighting with the silly things. Always good to keep spare ones, which I think I have. Okay, so even with the top plastic piece off here, the oil filter housing is still pretty difficult to get to. So for the sake of 
videoing. You may not, not necessarily have to do this, but I'm going to take the footwell plastic off here so I can get better access to that oil filter housing. So there are five um, nuts here, 10 millimeter in the wheel wells. There are some plastic, uh, those body clips and a couple torque screws on each end here. So I'll go about doing that. That'll take me a few minutes, so I'll get back to you on that. You see this nut and bolt in here? Let's put it in a place where it makes it very difficult to get it out. Thanks, engineers. This drives me insane. You wonder why people who work on things can't stand the people who designed them. Finally got the foot well off. I'm not sure if that was just an exercise in trying to make mundane man go insane, but this seems awfully ridiculous to have to get at that oil filter housing. Now you may not do this or have to do this. You may be able to get your fingers in there, but for the sake of showing you where it is, I took all the plastic covers off that I could. It'll also give me access to at least that spark plug there that I can change. I'm sure I'll have to do the same kind of dismantling on the other side. So let's finally get to this oil filter. Okay, we're going to take off those three Torx uh, nuts there, or bolts, and they are a, let me check the wrench here, why doesn't it say on it? It's that size. I put some paper down there just to catch any oil that may come out. Okay, we've got the bolts out. Let's see what happens here. There we go. Got the cover off. You can see the top of the filter there. I got my tray underneath. I'll just drain the oil out of the cover here. And you'll see there is a an O-ring on this cover, the red part. And we do have a replacement for that. Set that down, and we'll just pull out this oil cartridge. Which of course wants to fight me here. And there that is. Looks pretty dirty. Now I haven't changed the oil in quite a while. Plus there's been lots of short starts on it when I just run it to warm it up. So um, this is a good task to do. Uh, even if it's not meeting the number of hours or whatever because the oil's just starting to get thinner with all the short starts that I've done with it. I'm going to clean out that housing and then we'll put the new filter back in. Okay, for this job uh, with the oil change portion, I went to the old interwebs and um, bought this kit online. I'll put a link down below. So what it comes with is 10W40 oil, it is the um, BRP or Can-Am uh, OEM kit, so it is designed for this uh, ATV, and it came with the oil filter here, and two and a half liters of 10W or 0W40 uh, synthetic oil. And, I can find it here, it's over here, came with a new uh, O-ring for the filter and a compression uh, washer for the uh, oil plug. And I'll have to figure out what that one's for because so far taking off anything hasn't produced that. So I will let you know what that is. So I'm going to put the new O-ring on the new filter there and we'll put it back in the housing and get that buttoned up and then we'll put the plug back in on the oil pan just going to clean out the housing cover here and we'll just pop off the old o-ring it just slips off like that stretch the new one on there 
see if I can do that with one hand. You've seen my dexterity so far, so there's a good chance I won't be able to do it with one hand. Just a minute. There we go. We'll kind of just put some lubrication on that O-ring too so that it slips on nice and smooth and has a good seal. And we'll just wipe out this housing. Make sure there's no debris in there. Okay, and the new filter goes with that rubber end towards the motor or engine. It just kind of pushes on there like such. And then the cover will slip on over top. Double check, make sure the filter's in all the way. to do this with all the covers off and my big sausage fingers. And I'll just tighten that down. So when you're tightening this down, don't over tighten it for sure. You'll definitely strip out or break off the uh, bolt and then you'll be a very unhappy camper and my elbow dialed in so that I can feel how tight that should be and we'll also check it for leaks once we get oil back in it okay we'll take the old compression washer off and put the new one on and make sure we discard that one and we'll put the drain plug back in and we'll fill it up with oil. Now with the cover off you can actually see where the drain plug goes. I would cleaned off the surface already and cleaned off the drain plug. We'll just thread that back up. This also doesn't need to be too tight. Just give it a good firm Pull on the wrench, but don't over tighten it. Okay, so we're going to pull out the dipstick here, which is also the oil fill area. Put my funnel in. Now I checked my manual and it said that the capacity on the 500 is 2 liters. So um, this kit came with 2.5 liters. Um, which I think is the capacity of the 450 engine. So interesting that they do that, that there's less oil in the bigger engine. Okay, so let's put in our oil. Now, again, I'm using this XPS 0W40. Um, you know, there are other oils that could be used. Uh, why don't you let me know what you would use in your ATV or off-road vehicle instead of going to this OEM uh, oil. So when I open these, I always like to make sure I get the foil way out of the way and as much off as possible. You don't want that floating around your engine. Okay, first liter in. Liter number two. Okay, we'll just quickly check the level. It hasn't been run yet, so some oil will go up into the oil housing. Let's see how our two liters did here. It's hard to see in this light, but it is a little over full, but that's only because the filter housing hasn't been filled yet with a start. Now, let's see if I can start it with the current battery charge. 
I haven't changed the battery yet. That'll be the next step. So let's see if we can actually get it to go here. Key on. Just enough. Let it run for a couple minutes and then uh, we'll shut her down and check the oil again. And check it for leaks as well. Okay, after running it a bit, let's see where our oil level ended up. And it is, good God, it's hard to read off of this dipstick. I think it's on the full mark. After it settles further, I will check it again the next time I run it. But we're going to call that good for now. Specifications did say two liters. I did put two liters in, but I've also got this uh, half liter or whatever. Yeah, a half liter that I can top it up with if I need to. Okay, so that is the oil change piece. I'm just going to go around, check for leaks. Let's wipe all this down, make sure nothing new came up. Check around the oil plug. Feels dry. I think what I'm going to do is I'll just give that a little squirt to some brake clean here. This is the explosive kind, so that's always good to know. Just squirt in there. Try not to get it all over my camera. Okay, that's the oil change portion. We put the plug back in, filled it up with two liters of synthetic oil, changed the filter with the O-ring. On the drain plug, we make, made sure we changed that washer. The next thing we're going to go on to is replacing that battery. The quad sat for a couple months without the last time I started it, maybe a bit longer, and the battery was dead. I had to uh, jump start it, so that's just a good sign that the battery is worn out. Um, it met the end of its life. Usually it's five years for a battery, so uh, I want to change it so that if I'm out in the bush, I don't, uh, I'm not caught with uh, a dead battery. So I don't know with these CVT transmissions if you can push start one of these things, but it doesn't have a pull start. Um, so I'm not sure if you can put it in gear and, and push start it with a CVT transmission. Maybe comment below if you know if you can or not. It'd be good information to know. Okay, get the battery out of here. It's fairly straightforward. There's this hold, hold down bracket here. We've got our positive cable and our negative cable. The positive and negative cable can be removed with a Phillips screwdriver. And I think this is probably a number 10 bolt that we have to take out of uh, this hold down bracket. Definitely a number 10. Just loosen these off. bracket. Now I always like to do the negative terminal first just to uh, prevent any unnecessary grounding. So it's just a Phillips screw on the wire terminal and we've got our negative cable. One cable is coming from the starter or the ground point on the machine. The other one's coming from my uh, winch on the front. So we'll just push those out of the way. Get the positive one now. There we go. Battery should be released from its purchase. Just clean up the battery holder here, a little bit of dirt in there. And we'll set the new battery in. Now this battery is, and it's called the Eliminator, it's uh, a Canadian tire brand which is a 
hardware store here in Canada. So it's um, a direct replacement for the um, OEM one which came as a, the old one was a, let me see here. The old battery was a YTX20L-BS. This new one is, and the new unit is an ETX20L. It came with new hardware as well. If I can get it out of the plastic shield for the positive terminal. And it wants you to use these brass washers that came with it too. Well, I can't use the brass fittings that the battery came with because of the thickness of these uh, cables. One thing I am going to do though is just put a little bit of uh, lithium grease on there to prevent any corrosion. Put some on each terminal. Hadn't experienced any corrosion so far, so that's a good sign. I think I had done this as part of a maintenance process before. That being said, I haven't really done much work on this unit, so I'm basically uh, kind of learning as I go here. Positive cable. I didn't crank down too hard on that. These negative cables seem to be wanna be a little too short. There we go. Just needed a little positive reinforcement. That's a negative. Positive, we'll tighten that down a bit more. Negative again. That seems to be a nice tight connection. And we'll just put the bracket back on with, with our three bolts. At least this task was fairly easy. I don't know, I found the oil change harder than, uh, especially getting at the oil filter, quite a difficult thing to do. Especially having to uh, remove all the covers and everything. That being said, I was gonna have to remove covers anyways to uh, get to the spark plug. And there's two spark plugs on this unit being a two-cylinder obviously there we go torque to specification new battery it should already be it comes prepped they say so we should be able to fire up the quad and make sure it's working as expected Headlights came on. I see they're a little uh, uneven, eh? One's higher than the other. Something else to think about. I usually turn the lights off to do a start. Crank up good. We'll just let that charge for a minute. So I don't die. Okay, this is a few days later. I ran out of time the other day when I got started on this and 
you know, mundane man. Hasn't uh, seen his budding YouTube career flourish yet, so I have to still work for a living. So let's continue on with the spark plugs. This is the spark plug on the right side of the motor. We'll go to the other side and change the other one after I take off some panels over there. Spark plugs I purchased are the NGK type. They are exactly the same as the ones that are in it now. And you want to uh, gap the spark plugs to 30 according to the manual. Um, 30 is also, 0 0.30 is also equal to 0.76 millimeters versus 0 0.30 inches. So I have my handy dandy gapper here. And they usually come pretty closely gapped. This one, when I push the uh, the wire through at 0 0.30, it seems to be right on the money. These are the 5 8 inch uh, spark plug base. So we'll just take off the boot here from the wire, or from the spark plug rather. Just kind of get it out of our way. And I'm going to kind of push it alongside the shift linkage there. So I look at this spark plug. Actually didn't look too bad. Looks like uh, normal wear and tear. It's still a pretty good spark plug, so I think I'm going to uh, save it. Let me just check the gap on here. See how much it wore down over the hours that I ran it. So at 3.0 or 0 .30, sorry, the gap is basically right on the money. So I wouldn't even say these spark plugs are wore out. I'm going to change them anyways, and uh, I'll just save them. I'll put them in the back hatch just in case maybe a person floods it, which is hard to do with a uh, fuel injected model. But also, even if you get them wet or something, you've got spares with you. Okay, you don't want to over tighten the spark plug so when you feel the base and the gasket um, or steel washer that's on the spark plug hit the base of the head probably give it a maybe a half to a three quarter of a turn and tighten it down i think that's good enough there you can put a torque wrench on it i'm not sure what the torque specs are on the spark plug but over the years you just get a feel for it okay we'll put the boot back on these by the look of it but look at the old ones. You don't need the uh, steel uh, head that comes on the spark plug. So I'm going to take that off and then I'll plug the boot back in. Probably should have taken off before I put the spark plug on, but that's okay. Easy to get at. So that's the boot or the the steel head that I've taken off the spark plug, um, and this type of boot doesn't need that on there. Okay. Now we'll go on to the other side and do that spark plug, but I've got to take some plastic panels off first. Okay, more body panel plugs here. I'm a big fan of these, but they do make it simple, I guess. I bought some more, so I'm going to end up having to replace these. I think they're getting loose. Another one down in the wheel well here, and another one in the rear wheel well. Okay, to make it easier to get at the spark plug, which is not easy with uh, getting your hand in behind here, I'm going to move this heat shield out of the way where I've taken out a 10 mil up here, and this uh, vent hose comes off, and there's a 10 mil right here, and another one up above, and then another one back here for a total of one, two, three, four. So I was able to just get the heat shield out of the way, this, push it back towards the back of the machine. And now I have better access to the spark plug up in here without cutting the heck out of my arm. I wouldn't want to be doing a field repair or a trail repair with some of the stuff that they have going on here trying to access stuff. Okay, let's see if we can get that boot off and get that spark plug replaced. I wonder if they could have designed that any harder to get at. 
Okay, this one. That one looks pretty good too. Gap is okay. Um, I'm wondering if it's running a little lean. Uh, you tell me what you think if that's uh, a lean looking plug. It does pop sometimes, you know, not really backfire, but pop out the exhaust every now and again. Um, but overall the uh, spark plug is virtually new as well. So I'm going to put the new one in anyways. Okay, new spark plug is in and the boot is back on. So we can put the heat shield back in and close up the side covers. Okay, that heat shield is back on. I still got to put this rubber boot back in. And it was just kind of a notched fit. Must be like a vent for the, the exhaust or something. There we go. All I know is when the seat's on there, my bum stays nice and warm sitting on top of this motor. I am under the distinct impression too that they don't want your average garage dude to be uh, working on these things because they make them so hard to just do a simple job like changing a spark plug. Okay, I got this side cover back on. The other side's going to be a little bit more difficult because I have to put the uh, footwell thing back in and then uh, that side panel as well. And I know I struggle getting it out, but it's really no good camera angle watching a guy try and uh, put uh, these covers back on and listen to somebody swear as they pinch their fingers and all that. So I'm just going to set up the camera and put it on time lapse and uh, you know you can flip ahead if you don't really care about this part. I think my problem is I'm trying to be too gentle. You really just gotta bend and twist and pull and they finally pop in. seat just latches on a bar here there's in the seat there's a notch and there's a bar right here you just shut the seat forward like this and snap the seat on now what I should have done before putting everything back together was make sure it was gonna run fine after the spark plugs I hope I'm not gonna regret that so let's uh, fire this baby up see what we get Hit the old start button Okay, the final step in my little maintenance program here. Program, really, I haven't done nothing to this machine probably in four years, so. But I'm gonna grease as many fittings as I can get at. There's probably about 233,429 uh, grease fittings on this thing that you should be greasing the joints uh, frequently, uh, especially if you're in water and mud quite a bit. Mine kind of looks like it's a boulevard cruiser, but it has been dirty and muddy before, but. Um, it hasn't really done much in the last couple of years, so that's why it's so clean. So, let's carry on with doing a little bit of grease work. So you can see in places like this, it's pretty difficult to get to the grease nipple. But I'm going to give it the old college try. This one has a 190, or a 190, a 90 degree uh, angle on the uh, grease nipple, so 
just make sure your nipples are clean. So pretty much any mechanical pivot point is going to have a grease location most likely. So I'm just going to try and go after all of those. Okay, I did get some grease in that one. You want to make sure you don't over grease it too. Probably just a couple pumps just to make sure there is some lubrication in there. Uh, let's carry on to the other 239,000. Okay, engineers and designers, make sure a high maintenance part is placed at the most difficult place to get at, just so that uh, people never do it, or it forces you to go to the dealer to get work done. Okay, I think I got all of the uh, grease nipples I could find. I might have exaggerated on the number a bit, but anywhere there's an articulation point, like on the upper and lower A arms in the front here. Um, I don't even know if I can show you half of them. They're so hard to get at. It was ridiculous. Let's make sure we put high maintenance parts in crappy areas. Now, it may be the tools I have or my approach to this. Probably would have been easier maybe to take off the wheels, that type of thing. But uh, overall, this was a crappy job and I did not like it the whole way through. Well, I am pooped. That was a bit of a chore of a job. Um, change the oil, change the filter, change the battery out, uh, greased all the uh, pivot points, and what else did we do? That's about it, I think. Changing uh, or taking all these covers off was uh, fun, and just getting it. The oil filter seemed ridiculous to have to go to that effort, and maybe with the right tools or, or something you're able to get at it uh, better than I am. But overall, I think I hated this whole process. Um, the, from getting at the grease nipples, um, being in difficult areas to get your hand into, and the way they mount some of the, uh, the bolts to hold the covers on, or, and the foot wells was ridiculous. Now, I haven't driven it a lot. It's been two years sitting around mostly. I think I only went out once last year, so uh, maintenance-wise, from a time perspective, um, it seems long, but from a mileage perspective, it was not. So that's it for this edition of Mundane Man. If there's any uh, suggestions you have on making this job a little less painful and annoying, um, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye bye. Now my wheels in motion and my No, it doesn't.